No, I think this might have been just the catalyst for some stuff that was already simmering. Uh, yeah. I don't, for me, and like, a, apart from everything that happened this year, and like, if that never happened, um, I don't think that the sport has the best trajectory. I haven't thought that since maybe 2016, honestly that the way that the pros are handled, the structure of the season, obviously, like, the safety, all that stuff, the safety is a bigger thing now that the sport's grown, right? Like, because it only used to just be, like, semifinals and things like that. But the uh, – yeah, I just don't think it's been the best, right? Like, I think the be the closest we got to m making it a real pro sport was kind of, like, the sanctional X model. Uh but that's kind of my thought on it. Um, it's even if, in my opinion, even if they do every, the, the question that athletes should ask is like, even if CrossFit does everything we ask, which like the list or whatever, if you're pro PFA, um, is that structure good? And I would say no, like no way, man. Uh, the open, the quarters, the semis, the games, that's it. A single elimination season. Um, you got to compete against a bunch of people that aren't actually, like, pros in the sport. That, like, are their videos all getting reviewed that could potentially impact my... Like, it's just not real pro sports, man. And, like, there is a way to do it better. And I think there's a lot of tour sports that do it better already. And give their athletes an actual season um, that has multiple opportunities to gain points, to work towards a world championship bid or whatever it is. There's more earning opportunities. There's more media for you guys to cover. Like it's really uh, that they haven't done that um, for whatever reason. Like I don't, I don't think that it's, I, I think you could do that. It, you could create something like that. It, that runs at the same time as the games, right? You could do both if you wanted to. But I just think as far as like professionalizing the sport of fitness, it's a long way to go. And I think creating continuity, may, maybe this is a resolution, but like creating continuity to, between several of the big events where you can, they, you know, work together and you can work towards Alec, like gaining points towards a world championship or earning a place at the world championships um, is the way to go. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, there's a lot of money that's needed for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's my thought on, on all of that. And I think those conversations are starting to spin up now because of what has happened in the unrest in the community, at least on the, on the athlete side of things, like a lot of the pros that I've spoke to. Um, do you think it is a pro sport now? As is? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, I just don't, if, if you, yeah. See, like yeah, if you look I at, mean, if you look at like golf or if you look at like tennis, you have, yes, the athletes have sponsors, like they're sponsored by booking Titleist or, you know, Nike, whatever. But they also, like if you make it on the tour in golf, yeah. Now you've got now you've made bank. Like now yeah, you're, I, you're I, I guess you would say no, because yeah. it's really. It's about maybe, maybe like five professional maybe like 10 professional athletes in crossfit as in if you took away all their sponsor money exactly, that they'd exactly. be fine and i think exactly, that's yeah. it's like that's the issue <laughs> <laughs> and i don't mean to like downplay it right? i'm not saying that like the athletes aren't impressive or they're not professional in their approach or they're not i'm just saying well, it's not like them it's the league that they're yeah playing. like if you stripped if tier said hey guys we're pulling out a lot of athletes would be fucked. <laughs> like, you know, like that's the reality of it. And then, I mean, you know, there's, it, unless you're winning Wadapalooza or top two or three at the games or winning Rogue or, well, maybe like top podium. four or top five in Rogue, yeah. you're not, you're not earning enough. Like, funnily enough, I would have said Luka Jukic is probably one of the only actual professional CrossFit athletes because all he takes money from is winning competitions. Like he, he used to go over to, I hope he keeps doing it, but he used to go over to the Middle East 
for like three months and just do random competitions all over the place yeah. and earn money for the year then that was his like salary for the year that's a professional like that he is a professional athlete because he only earns really he's sponsored by hustle made but like i don't know it's probably i mean it's not tier money so yeah. he's earning through the competition and then i often think that that's it's sort of a conversation it's a confusing conversation because on one side you have the athletes the thing that comes up a lot is like, oh, we need to professionalize the sport and, you know, like uh, we need to treat it as a professional sport and blah, blah. And then on the other side, I kind of start thinking like, but it's not a professional sport. And like, it's hard to treat something like a professional sport when it's not a professional sport. Like you need to get it to the level of requiring it to be treated in that way. Like yeah. the, if, if the season structure changed to what you're talking about and you had the likes of... I don't know how they do it. Like, it's just so many separate entities. Like, I can't imagine Bill and Katie being like, sure, let's join your league, uh, live, loud and live. Do you know, like, I'm, I'm sure they'd, everybody has their own interests and everybody has their own things that they want to do. Absolutely. And then you look at some of those competitions and historically, I mean, Rogue Invitation is an advertisement. Like, there's yeah. no way they're making money on that. That's an advertisement for Rogue and for themselves and for the athletes and they're promoting the athletes and the brands around it and stuff, which is amazing. Like Wadapalooza, I don't know what their bottom line is, but I can't imagine they're raking it in in Miami and SoCal. Same down under, like these big competitions, you're like, right, are they clearing like a million dollars? Like have they got money to be just thrown around the place? Or if those sponsors also pull out of those events, are they fucked? And it's, yeah. I just think it's sort of a house of cards. And if you start shaking the table too much to be like, you know, we need to professionalize the sport. <laughs> and like some of the brands are like, do you know what? Fuck this. And then yeah, it's just yeah. everything falls down. It is hard. Like it's, it's just so. Yeah. Murky. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it just takes a lot of money to organize yeah. something like that. And a lot of buy-in from sponsors, athletes, everything. Uh, so. The sanctional thing that you're talking about is probably, that's probably was the closest. I mean, there was a shit ton of flaws with it, but it probably was the closest to. The closest thing. Yeah, like a reasonable, okay, you up in, in Dublin and Filthy 150, well, strength and depth is in two weeks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think like, yeah, so that that was close. I mean, I think having some type of uh, like connection with those competitions makes sense. There's a lot of moving parts there. Uh, I don't think like the, the new season starts with 20 or 30 sanctioned events like it used to, yeah. like it was that year, like... I think it starts with, I don't know what that was. It's something out here, man. 